I uh, thought I'd start with just a few words about myself. Um, I'm from the Lunenburg area, and I came to Dalhousie to do my bachelor's degree. Then I went to UBC to do my graduate work at University of British Columbia. And I focused on materials that could have application in advanced batteries. At that time, lithium batteries, and then later on, lithium ion batteries. And I've been involved since 1978 in this whole process. And I've watched the lithium ion battery go from an idea to a reality. And without the lithium ion battery, you wouldn't have smartphones, you wouldn't have tablets, and you wouldn't have electric vehicles coming along. And if you read the, the bio of me in the, in the program, you'll learn that I've been a co-inventor on a lot of different patents, and patents are funny things. I think one out of a hundred patents actually has value. The rest of them are just junk. But one of the patents that we worked on in the year 2000, a postdoc, Zhang Hua Lu and I, um, invented a class of materials called NMC. And NMC stands for lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide. And it's now used as a positive electrode material in, in lithium ion batteries at a rate of about 6,000 metric tons per year. So invented at Dalhousie University. And that means about one in 10 lithium ion cells has material invented here within it. So I'm very proud of that. Okay, so on to the main topic of the talk. You know, I'm showing you the picture of the Tesla Model S here. It's an awesome electric car powered by lithium ion batteries. It was Motor Trend's car of the year in 2013. It has a driving range of 425 kilometers before it needs to be charged. And it really is the first electric vehicle ever produced to show that electric vehicles could be functional and green and yet amazingly cool and awesome. Of course, we need electrified transportation because we can't keep burning fossil fuels. If we do, global warming is going to get more and more out of control. And that's really, really bad. So Tesla now is coming out in 2017 with what they call the Model 3. And the Model 3 is meant to be an affordable electric vehicle for the masses. Nobody knows what the Model 3 is going to look like yet or what its specifications really are. But on March 31, Tesla will unveil the Model 3 in uh, Palo Alto, California, and we'll be able to see what it looks like and how far it will go on a, on a charge. But Tesla is very optimistic about the future of the Model 3 and also its other electric vehicles. And to meet the demand that they see coming, in 2014, they started constructing this factory called the Gigafactory. The Gigafactory is located outside Reno, Nevada. And this is a photograph taken in the construction phase. It turns out to be the building with the largest square area footprint on the planet. It's a massive thing. And if you look at the rooftop there, you'll see it's very shiny, and that's because there's solar panels on the roof. The entire factory is powered by renewables, which really shows Tesla's commitment to renewable energy and electrified transportation. This factory will produce enough lithium ion batteries for 400,000 electric vehicles per year. And the way that lithium ion battery production is measured is in gigawatt hours of lithium ion cells per year. So what does that mean? If you took all the lithium ion cells the factory produced in one year and charged them, they would store 35 gigawatt hours of electrical energy. To put that into perspective, in 2015, every lithium ion cell produced on the planet by all the producers in the entire world represented a production of 35 gigawatt hours of lithium ion cells. So the gigafactory will double lithium ion cell production. 
At the moment, pretty much all lithium-ion batteries are made in Asia, Korea, Japan, China. So this gigafactory coming to North America and doubling world production is a huge deal. And for me, involved with the lithium-ion business from the beginning, I just said, you know, listen, somehow I got to be a part of this, you know, because having this manufacturing capability in North America means a, a lot. So I traveled to Tesla in the summer of 2014, and I met with their battery group there, and I talked about, you know, how about we try to set up a research partnership where we can bring our talents uh, to, your, to your problems, and maybe we can help improve the lithium ion cells that you use in the vehicles and also in your energy storage products that I'll talk about in, in a minute or two. So after some consideration, um, Tesla decided that they would enter a research partnership with us here at Dalhousie. And in June of 2015, J.B. Strobel, shown with me looking into the cockpit of a Model S, he traveled here to Dal to sign the research partnership agreements. And uh, J.B. Strobel is the CTO and the co-founder of Tesla, so he's like number two in the company. And this is a, an article taken from the online version of Fortune magazine, where I'm called a new weapon. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I'm a, not a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> hopefully I'm a good weapon. Anyhow, um, what are we going to do? How are we going to try to improve Tesla's projects? Like, what's this research partnership all about? So, I'll tell you in a second. Tesla also makes the power wall. And this is a photo of two power walls side by side. Each one will store about 10 kilowatt hours of electrical energy. And 10 kilowatts of electrical energy would pretty much power your house without a problem overnight. And if these are charged by solar panels or by small windmills during the, during the day or when the wind is blowing, at night when there's no sun or when there's no wind, they're discharged to power the house. And the power wall can be charged and discharged once per day, and it should last around 10 years. So this is where the research partnership starts to become clear because when you purchase one of these power walls, it costs money and it's going to last 10 years. Well, what if it lasted 20 years or 30 years or 40 years before you would need to replace it? That would be much, much better, right? And this is where the problem comes because it's pretty hard to design a lithium-ion battery that lasts a long time. But it's even harder to prove that it will. If you want to show that a lithium-ion cell will last for 10 years under real conditions, you have to test it for 10 years. And if you want to show it's going to last now 20 with the improved chemistry that you bring to bear, you have to test it for 20 years, right? So our research group in 2008 started developing advanced diagnostic methods to detect the very low levels of unwanted parasitic reactions that occur in lithium ion cells that ultimately lead to their failure. And it's these, these methods that we've perfected from 2008 until now that interest companies like Tesla so that we can study new chemistries and learn in a short period of time whether the lifetime of the cells will be dramatically improved or not. So, we have to stop burning fossil fuels. It's as simple as that. And renewables are the way to go. Solar, at the moment, if you buy a solar photovoltaic panel with a lifetime of 30 years, the electricity it produces today will cost you the same as electricity from coal. If you erect a big wind tower, windmill, and it operates for 30 years, the electricity from that windmill 
will be roughly equivalent in cost to the electricity from coal. The problem with the wind and the sun, of course, is they're not there all the time, right? It's not sunny at night, and there's no wind on a calm day. So to implement renewables at a large scale on the grid, you've got to have energy storage, however you're going to do it. You know, if you're heating your home, you can store energy as heat. But for certain things, you need it as electricity. And the idea is you would build gigantic power walls, and Tesla does do this, and so do other companies, where you can store the energy from solar and wind. At the moment, if the, if the power wall were to last 10 years, storing the energy and re-delivering it would about double the cost, okay? So solar plus the storage would be double than solar alone. So the idea is by extending the lifetime of the lithium ion cells from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 or however long we can ultimately make them last, the cost will come down proportionately and that's a good thing. Okay, so that's why we're in this. And I want to leave you with a really sobering note here, which is, okay, we, we have to do this. And wind and solar are established technologies that costs are quite good at the moment. Let's say that we wanted to power Nova Scotia with wind. We direct enough windmills, and we'd also have to put in enough storage to be able to store electricity for a period of time when the wind is not there. So let's say we want to store electricity for one day. So we could power Nova Scotia for one day. Okay? How much would we need to store? Well, Nova Scotia power generates 2.3 gigawatts continuously of electrical power. If we want to store 24 hours worth, 2.3 gigawatts times 24 hours equals 55 gigawatt hours we need to store to power Nova Scotia for one day. If you remember back to my previous slide, the Tesla Gigafactory, which will be half the world productions of lithium ion cells, makes 35 gigawatt hours of lithium ion cells in a year. Not even enough to power Nova Scotia for one day. Okay? So the scale of energy storage that we need for renewables is almost beyond comprehension. It's massive. And yet, you know, people like Elon Musk, who's the CEO of Tesla, recognizes the importance and has the guts and the passion to go ahead and build this giant gigafactory and get people to buy into this idea. You know, the man is truly a visionary. He's been ranked alongside Bill Gates and Steve Jobs as one of the most visionary guys, you know, in, in this era. And I must tell you that Tesla has only one university partnership in the world, and it's with us, okay? And I feel incredibly thrilled and incredibly honored to have the opportunity to work with a company like that. Thank you very much.